Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, today what I want to do is talk about power supplies. I picked up this Raiden power supply, this RD6018. So it's capable of 60 volts, 18 amps. That's impressive. And at the price, it's really impressive. It's, okay, so this kit, you get the display and the box, and it comes in this box. That's for $115 from AliExpress. I'll put the link down below. Appreciate it if you use that. That helps the channel for free. Free way to support the channel, right? All right, so this is really impressive because you know I've got a lot of power supplies. I've got other power supplies, but this one right here is the one most closely in spec to this one. It's 60 volts. You can go, it shows in gray at 70, but it goes up to 60. 15 maybe to 18 so this one's pretty close to this in spec if I had two of those I'd be set because often you need two power supplies uh, I got all these tracking power supplies but they're all limited like you know this Tektronics it's only a hundred watt power supply the GW who actually makes that Tektronics this one's 180 watts and that one's like a hundred watts and then I've got these two guys down here and Anyway, I got the Kai Wheats power supplies. They're awesome. They're 300 watts, but they're limited to 30 volts. 10 amps is pretty good. I mean, 10 amps really does a lot of things I need, but the 30 volts. Now, one thing I, I think that uh, tracking power supplies, a lot of times you see just that 30 volt limit. And some of these don't even go to 30. They go to 20, 25 volts. But anyway, I think that 30 volts is kind of a safety. It's a safe electrical low voltage level that kind of falls into this category. And, you know, 60 volts, it is a high DC voltage. It is, you know, more dangerous for sure. Um, but that, I don't know. But, you know, also there's a costing, obviously, involved. So this one right here, you have to, with this kit, you have to buy a power supply it takes AC down to DC and what you want is about 65 volts so that you can step down with this guy to 60 volts okay when I the power supply I have I, I think I can calibrate to 60 we'll find out okay and I'm gonna bring you over show you what I have I've just started putting the thing together and so I'm gonna show you walk you through that okay uh, so let's go ahead and just jump in here and do it um, yeah, let's just do that, okay? All right, guys, so this is the power supply unit, okay? It's the what powers the unit from the inside. It says 60 volts, 20 amps, 1200 watts. Nicely packed. Okay, an operation manual and a quality inspection. All right, so let me just pull this out of here. It's nicely packed in the foam. Now right away what we see is there's a switch and it's in the 110 position. Yeah, there's the model of the unit. And this is our connections, our line of neutral and our earth ground, safety ground. And there's an adjust switch over here to adjust the voltage on the output. I think I'm gonna, my first thought is I'm gonna crank this up as high as I can go. Cause I think I want 60 volts on the output of my power supply. So I really want a 65 volt out, output, but I didn't see that option. I believe these three are in parallel and these three positives are in parallel. So that's our power supply. It's got some weight to it. It's got, I mean, it's a nice box. You can see it's, you know, it feels nice. This metal here on the bottom and the side is thick. This top and this side is like a, a top case to it. And then we have the fan here. So yeah, looks like a nice power supply here. So that's the kit I have. I have the links for this. I appreciate if you use the links. That helps the channel for free to you. Anyway, that's the model number and everything. Oh wow, look at that. I just grab this from the side. So this looks like the wires to connect everything, I hope. I hope this kit is complete take the top off and it's painted on both sides it looks like a nice painting 
and there's the bottom of the box. So it's just top and bottom and then this. And this is the display. So that's the display unit, it's in the box. It's a part number for the display unit. Here's some specifications for the display unit. My power splice cable at 1200 watts, but it looks like this unit will keep it to 1080 watts. All right, and so again, it's the RD6018. So I guess that's 60 volts, 18 amps. And that's if this power supply over here can supply enough voltage to do all that, or current, and current, I guess. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna find the instruction manual, I guess, so we'll go look at that. Okay, guys, here's the manual. It's actually quite nice. The first half of it is Chinese, and the second half is in English, so you can see over here on the left border, I've got the things here. Let me just click on that. See, it drops us down about halfway, page 32 over here. Here's contents right here. The top part is just functionality. And then the Android app is right here in this section. And the iOS app is in this section. And the PC software. Okay. We continue on the left side with how to load PC software and functions and all that. And then there's an appendix. Common battery voltage comparison tables. Now this is because this thing actually charges batteries. Over here on the right, technical side. The uh, one I have here is the RD6018, right here in the corner. So 18 amps, I should be able to go over 1000 watts if I can get up to 60 volts on my output. Now, again, I have this board down here at the bottom. So there's a couple other views of boards. Now over here on the left, I've highlighted CR1220. That is the battery that you'll want to get so you can uh, keep your memory stored. If I go back to here, you can see down here, there's a battery down here in the corner. And then right here, this is where the Wi-Fi board goes. It fits pretty tightly, it fits nice and snug. So here's Wi-Fi board that I have here on the left. And you can also get this option here, RS-485. And this cable right here is a temperature probe. This is so you can connect it to your battery so you don't overcharge batteries. Super cool. So here's operations. You can see that it's written surprisingly well, right? But here's the Android app. So here's the iOS, same kind of thing. And here's PC software. Now, by the way, I was going to do this. I went to download this, but now they've added a password. So I don't know how you, you probably have to email them to get the password. Uh, but I did want to show it to you, but it would take me some, you know, I'd have to get that password, I guess, which I didn't expect. But here's the panel here. Let me just zoom in on this. So the PC software does look a lot more intense. It looks like you can do a lot more with it. Here's the appendix. Here's the common voltage types. You know. Well, let's see what's here. Okay, this. Oh yeah, look. There's a connector right there. This looks like the temperature probe. Okay, a couple of spade lugs. That is a surface mount fuse. And this is a Wi-Fi module. And that's the faceplate. Buttons feel nice. That's got a click button too. And it has an indented rotary knob, that's nice. And here's our uh, plus minus and our, um, hold on, that's not ground. It shows a battery symbol. It's got mounting holes for the power supply down. And by the way, the part where you snap in the front faceplate, it's, I mean, it feels pretty darn rigid, so. You know, I mean, see, I'm kind of twisting. It's a pretty strong gerbil little box. All right, now I realize what's going on here. Here's the fan. So this fan, man, I guess they must be common enough that they're lined up. All right, we're gonna open this thing. I just broke the, so one mounting screw here, one, one down here holding it down, and this. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like all opened up. Uh, there's a piece of dielectric here, 
and it's protecting these that coil from touching the side of the metal that's a nice touch and there's also a, a larger piece protecting the board from the metal and the board is green it looks like a fr4 so it's not that cheap uh, cm type or whatever that yellow uh, board that warps easier these green the fr4 doesn't warp so easy so nice quality uh, so the input power comes in here goes through a fuse and it looks like there's a three ntc's a 5d15 so i wonder if that's they start off 15 ohms there's three of them looks like they're in parallel going to a poly cap and then through a combo choke and then a dual bridge rectifier a jbj 2510 and then from there, they go through some nice capacitors. Uh, 250 volt, 1500 microfarads, but they're United Chemicon. So 105 degree rated. So those are nice capacitors. I'm impressed with that. They've got some, you know, that elastic or whatever it is to keep the vibration down. And our power to our fan comes up here so there's a little regulator here for that and these three blue guys down here are, are the white capacitors for our EMI filter up here they're working with this combo choke so our AC comes up here bridge rectified uh, made DC comes into here into our switching regulator which honestly I, I I'm a I'm almost assuming this is an LLC converter. That's kind of the popular thing these days. Uh, fairly complex designs, but big old transformer, very efficient. The control board would be here with the IC down there. Too bad it's not a plug out, so I can pull it out and look at the IC down there. Uh, but there's a transformer there made for a gate drive transformer coupling. This might be current sense for the primary side because it's got a big lead going to it. And then our big switching device is sandwiched between this thick metal housing and that nice heat sink right there. So that's a pretty nice design, nice touch, I think. Okay, so then on the secondary side, we go through a big choke. And I don't know if this isn't, I think that's, I was trying to decide if that was common mode choke or if it's just LC. I think the windings are in parallel. And then there's this little winding with Teflon coating, it looks like. And it comes down here. So I'm thinking this might be a current sense pickup on the secondary side. And then we go through these big uh, caps. And these are 1,000 microfarad, 100 volt. Now this is rated for 60 volts. I hope I can take it up close to 65. So 100 volt caps on, on that's a nice D rating. I can't see the brand. I don't recognize the color scheme on that. All right, so it says, I think it's spelled N-I-A-N-I, -I, it looks like. 105C rated cap. So I like the ratings and everything. I don't recognize the brand. This is a big, nice heat sink on the back of this thing. This thing look at that. That is a nice heat sink. It's got devices on both sides of it. Okay, it looks like it's a dual diode package, UA4030G. So, yeah, it looks like they're all the same. So there's four of them, and I'm assuming the other four here. So there's eight of those dual diode packages. Yeah, that is, I think the design looks impressive. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, I was uh, trying to look at that IC, but on the back of the board, it has a HYJ 1500 watt new version 1.1. So it looks like this thing is designed to go up to 1500 watts. And this IC down here, I see numbers on it, 1252A. So I'll have to look that up. By the way, putting this back on, I see these two hooks they have here that slides into here. I think that's a pretty smart design. It only took two screws, you slide it back, this screw captures it so it can't slide forward, and this screw keeps it pushed back that way. So, pretty smart. Alright guys, so here's all the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, this is the one thing I bought separately. Uh, the rest of everything came as a kit. 
I'll have to look up that manual. I'll show you that manual. Maybe it'll show me what these things go to. But this is a thermistor. And it looks like it could plug into that cable. It's got these little rubber feet. On the bottom it has the little metal washer. And they're not really hard, but they're not really soft. They're, they, they feel like they're just about the right size of compliant. So, yeah, I kind of like those. Uh, the fuse I left in the bag, spare fuse. Uh, I think these are spare lugs, spade lugs. And got the IEC power connector. Got the switch. And the Bluetooth module. The hardware for, I think, mounting the power supply in. And then I think this hardware is for the top of the box. It's kind of got the beveled head on it. Where these have like the built-in washer. Okay, so then we got our safety ground wire. Uh, black for the live wire, line one or whatever. And, and blue for neutral or line two. And then we have, I think, two red wires for the output. I think there's three terminals. But anyway, looks like there's two. And then uh, two black ones for the return and a jumper wire I'm not sure where that goes okay and our Bluetooth module again so alright so we got all the pieces I'm gonna start by putting the feet I think I'm gonna mount this I'm wondering if the feet mount into this so I'm gonna mount this in there and yeah start getting all the stuff to wire this guy up and test this first alright guys so I've got uh, the power supply mount down to the bottom I like this little plastic door the uh, it just swings open and slaps down to protect the terminals. But I've got the AC wired in and I, I kind of twisted them so they're kept together and try to keep the noise down. Brought them up here to the front and so the ground and the neutral go straight to the input power. And the line comes up to the switch, and from the switch comes down to the input power. So that's how that's done. Now this wire, I figured out what that was. There's that little card that I wasn't sure what it was. It's for a temperature probe. It's mounted back there, and the temperature probe mounts in like this, and you use this for battery charging. So uh, external temperature reading. So yeah, you can see how close this guy is to the air, output of the air flow. And so I ended up using, okay, first of all, the feet went in really easy and are nice and secure. And they just have just enough softness, but not too soft that they're gonna wear out. The I ended up using different screws. Uh, the threads in my power supply were slightly smaller then these screws uh, were meant to go down into these two holes, those two, and this one. They lined up, but they're just slightly too big, it seemed like. So, anyway, I used these uh, size 6 studs, and or I used these size 6 bolts and put them in, screwed them uh, two in here and two back there, and it's nice and secure and mounted nice and flush. So, all right. The other thing I wanted to do is just verify these three terminals are actually positive and these three terminals are actually negative and they're all tied together. So if I go here, 0.1 ohm, 0.1, so they're all nicely tied to the together. So the plus and minus there. Now you can see how the faceplate goes in. It goes in right like this, so the plus is right here on the inside, and then minus is on the outside. You can see down the board when you look really close. So I also just checked these. I didn't know if one was sand, so they're both power, but there's 0.1 ohms, so it looks like they're both totally power connections, which makes sense. That's a lot of current to send. I thought I might trim these, but I think when I put them in, they're just about the right length to go down there. So I think that's gonna be just about right. So the other thing is you can see that I mounted the little Bluetooth board in there and look how snug it is. My big fat fingers, that wasn't super easy to do by the way. And then also these little plastic guys, uh, they're used to hold the boards down. They snap the boards in, there's two boards. That's why there's 
two levels. So this little one right here swings right in and holds this little Bluetooth card down. So very smart design. I've been really happy with everything I've seen. Also this connector here where this guy internally will connect to this, it shows a little thermometer, a little temperature probe right above it. So, you know, no language barrier there. That makes it easy. And I'm gonna route this, I think, right across the top. I don't wanna route it along the AC. And it might be too short, I don't know. Maybe it'll reach that way. I just wanna keep it away from the AC. I wanna keep AC here and everything else separate. So, yeah, this will plug in right here. And these will cross over and go down. And this guy will come up and snap right into there. So, I'll go ahead and do that, finish it up. All right guys, one more thing I wanna show you. A couple things, I guess, actually. First of all, putting this faceplate in, it's very snug, even before you get to the point where it's gonna snap in. And just before I did that, I wanted to take one final measurement. I put this in capacitor mode, my little Hioki that really liking this meter. It's become my favorite meter. Anyway, let's just jump in here, see what capacitance we have at the output terminals. Okay, that's 3.83 millifarads. That's a decent amount of capacitance. Now, also, if I come out here to the power supply, see how much actually capa actual capacitance we have at the power supply. Uh, 1.59 millifarads. Okay, guys, I was going to uh, finish wiring this, snap it in, and test it. And I thought, no, I need to test this before. And I meant to do it actually when I before I bolted it down, which I thought about when I was assembling it. And I thought, oh, I just a little too confident, a little too excited. I've got the Amazon meter measuring DC voltage right here. This is the 90 uh, DM600. The 610 is out, guys. It has an extra feature. I think it's a temperature feature here. These are third-party tested. IPC67, very low cost. I'll have a link below. This is an awesome meter. Uh, VFD, all kinds of cool features. I reviewed this once. The Hioki is now my favorite. It's expensive meter, but it's awesome. 60,000 counts or whatever. It's just an amazing meter. Yeah, I prefer this over my Fluke 189 or 289. This will be reading AC right here. And then we have the Kiwitz HD200B measuring current. And these are really inexpensive and great for just this kind of thing. So I've got this power switch on, the IC power cord in. I've got my, I've got my Variac turned on right now. All right, guys, I'm going to bring up the voltage now, and I'm going to turn on the power switch. And what I want to do is bring up the voltage just a little bit. Okay, slow down. Okay, got about 12 volts there. I just laid these here because I might want to move them around, so I didn't want to have them snapped in. So I, I just want to check the power switch. Yep, it works. I just want to make sure that all the wiring looks like it's good. Yeah, the power switch looks like it works. Now, I, I would guess right around 80 volts, we should see the output come up. Maybe 85, somewhere around that range. Okay, whoa, we're coming up already. Very little current. I've been watching the current because that's the telltale if something's wrong. Wow, I can't believe the output's coming up pretty early. That's, that's great, I guess. Okay. Right around 80 volts, we should get closer to, it should be, okay, yeah, it should be close to 60, I was going to say, so it is. Okay, we're at 80 volts. Okay, somewhere around 80, 85, usually power supplies are designed to give out full voltage. So I'm going to take it to 120. I'm looking at the current. Current looks good. Whoa, the fan just kicked on. Kind of scared me a little bit. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. I was hoping this was one of those power supplies that would be quiet until until it got hot and then turn on. Uh, especially doing videos, people don't like fan noise, right? Okay, it's not taking very much current and steady, so that's all good signs. Okay, I got my little screwdriver with my insulated uh, thing. I'm gonna try to adjust this close to 65 if I can. I think you're supposed to be able to go about 10% plus my, I can't remember, five or 10%. All right, I had to get a different screwdriver. That other one, it was a little bit too small the blade to grab, so. Or maybe it's maxed out. 
it's interesting. I hear the fan turning off as I lower the voltage. Okay, unfortunately, I was hoping to get above 60 volts. Darn it. Okay, that's too bad because I thought this was 60 volts plus or minus, but it's 60 volts max. The reason why is because I can get 60. This this power supply is designed to put out 60 volts, but it's a step down, so I need so I won't be able to get quite up as high as 60. That's too bad. All right, that's I mean 60.3 as high as I can go. That's kind of a bummer. Like I say, I was hoping to get you know 65 volts out of it, but that's all right. Uh, we'll see how high I can get. I'll probably be able to get you know 55 at least. Okay guys, I swapped out to the HT206B because I put it on max setting and I want to see inrush current. So let's go ahead and measure that. I'm gonna just flip the switch on now. 1.8 amps, okay, whoa, you know what? Another thought is to do the panel here instead of the Variac, let's try that. All right, the Variac might have had some impedance so I went right to my plug strip. I'm gonna hit the power switch. Yeah, there we go, 2.8 amps. Yeah, the Variac has a little bit of impedance in it, so, okay, so, yeah, not much inrush, not bad at all. All right, guys, here's the moment of truth. Um, hey, by the way, let me just come up here real quick. See down here? There's three terminals for the plus three for the negative, and I used, I kind of left the middle one open. That way I draw current uh you know, I thought maybe it might spread the current around the terminals on the board. So anyway, just want to make that note. Okay, so let's go ahead and power this on. See what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to hit the switch on the back. Hopefully, fan turns on. Whoa, the switch automatically was already up. 60.34. Wow, that is, isn't that just what we read on the back of that thing? Okay, so that's the input. So that's pretty cool that it tells us the input of the voltage. All right, maybe you can see better now. I've got this 8 ohm resistor load that's good for 200 watts. Uh, this thing's supposed to put out 1,000 watts. So we're going to have to, I got an active load. I got some different loads. But anyway, I just thought just to start off with this, do this. I got this connected to the output so you can watch that compared to what this says. Now, 60.32, that's, I think, just what we read on the other side. And it looks like voltage is set for 5 volts. And current is set all the way to 18 amps right now. Over voltage, 62 volts. And uh, over current is 18.2. So, all right. I'm just going to go ahead. And I, what I love about this, I can turn it on and off. I don't love this, the fan noise, but maybe when I put the box on, who knows? Maybe it's going to not be quite as loud. Or, no, it's going to be louder once it puts out current. So it does, you can hear the fan kick on louder as the power goes up. So we only have 3 watts. That's because we're only at, uh, now this says 5 volts, 4.98. Okay, let's, okay, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Okay, let's push this in. Okay, let's turn that off for a moment and let's go to well actually you know what do I just hit voltage set okay I'm kind of winging it here so I just hit the voltage set then I'm allowed to change voltage 521 523 okay now I can move that digit over with these arrows so I can, now I can move by, you know, volts, or you can go by tenths, you know, so, yeah, you can get the kind of resolution you want. Although I can't go to the last digit, so I have to go by one volt at a time there, it looks like. Now I'm sure I can plug it in, 3 O enter. Yeah, so... I mean, I love having a knob as well as digital control. That's awesome that you can do both. But once I set it this way, it turned off this. So I have to go back there 
and say, oh, I, and then move the arrow over, okay? Then I can control by volts. Hey, the fan just slowed down, even though we got more power. Okay, guys, we're at 385 watts. That resistor should be getting hot, right? It will get hot pretty soon, I guess. Uh, 5557, 5557, pretty darn good. Now my meter up here, let me turn that on, AC. Yeah, anyway, I don't know if you can see that meter right here. 4.9 amps right here. And five, uh, okay, so things are looking good. Okay, guys, uh, it's running. I've got it set up. I tried to plug, watch what happens when I go vertical set and try to set 60 volts. Enter, error. It knows the input 60.32 and it won't go that high. So if I go voltage set 59, it lets me. Uh, but now watch what happens. Now, by the way, I got the scope set up. In the background, you'll see the current and voltage pop ups set for single uh, trigger. So I just want to see if it overshot the voltage and all that. And of course, we got the voltage reading right here still. Okay, here we go. Okay, 6.93, 385 watts. But, yeah, look at this. So the voltage, if you can see back there, here, let me zoom in on that for you. All right, guys, I zoomed in. This is uh, 10 volts per division for the voltage, the yellow one. The green is one amp per division. It's 20 milliseconds per division. So first of all, it took one, two, three, four, 100 milliseconds for them to come up. No overshooting, that's great. The current is one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven amps, just like it shows on the meter. And the voltage is five and a half division, so 55 volts, so just like it showed on the meter. So that looked good, no overshooting, all that kind of stuff, that looks great. All right, guys, so now what I have going on is I've got my current meter over here. I put another eight ohm resistor, another 200 watt resistor on. By the way, this guy over here is, is was getting really hot, even though I didn't have it on very long. I, yeah, it's too hot to touch. I, you know, I turn it on and off, and I've left it on for just a moment or two, but not just long enough to make this really hot. And it's a 200 watt resistor, so that's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to drop my current to two amps per division. Single trigger it again. Sorry about the reflection that you see. We're gonna have twice the current this time. Let's give it a shot. Here, I'll get my hand out of the way so you can watch this meter too. Wow, that sucked down the voltage. Now that was interesting. Uh, it started coming up and then look it dropped down so this thing's supposed to be capable of 18 amps so what's up with that okay it's putting out 12 amps let's see what okay 10 amps it likes 10 amps Okay, that's 500 watt. Look, I can go up to 600 watts. All right, guys, that was a bonehead thing to me. Look at my power cable. It is, I saw it smoking. That was dangerous. Um, I guess it would have just tripped my brake around my little plug strip, but this cord is really hot and it's very pliable. <laughs> that's too bad. I ruined a nice cord. Uh, I just pulled this off the shelf, didn't really pay attention like I should have. Uh, yeah, it's rated for 10 amps, 250 volts, so 10 amps, 115, so, man, you know what, 10 amps, I don't think it's rated for 10 amps because I should have been able to get 1,000 watts into the power supply and uh, I don't think I was there yet. I was around five, six hundred watts on the output when this thing started melting. I saw the smoke in the background and see where, look, here's the AC plug right here and it started melting right close to the plug. And then this is the actual one that I saw burning about halfway across. So 
Man, holy smokes. There's a quart I got to throw away. That's too bad. All right. So on this cable, it does say power cable, PVC. But right here, 0.5 millimeters, uh, I don't see anything on here saying how much current it can handle except for on the plug itself that says 10 amps. So uh, who knows? But yeah, I wasn't pulling 10 amps through here. And this thing is so soft and gushy even now. All right, so that is something to be careful with. Uh, this one's rated at 10 amps. This one's rated at 10 amps. Look at the size of cable difference there is there. This guy here is almost twice as big. And it feels like twice as heavy. But they're both rated at 10 amps. You can see just the girth of that plug. I mean, they're put in there at the same spacing, but you can see how big this plastic is and how small this guy is. So, yeah, 10 amps aren't the same. Okay, guys, I'm watching this guy. He goes up to about 9 amps, and these resistors get really hot. But let's fire it on, and I've got this set at 55 because that's where it defaults to, so I just set it there so the I just want to see if it tries to go where it's set, if it overshoots, any kind of problem. Got two uh, 8 ohm resistors in there, and that's about all we can get. Let's watch the power. I'm going to turn it on, and the mix signal trigger in the background. Here we go. Look at that, 750 watts. It's a lot of power, guys. That's as much as both my Kai Wheats together, and more background back there you can see that the currents just came up the current voltage came up nice 20 milliseconds per division so it's 20 40 60 80 about 100 milliseconds to come up nice and slow even no overshoots so that's all really nice all right so now i just went to lower voltage i set to eight volts and with the two eight ohm resistors we'll get two amps and i just want to see the low voltage if there's any overshoot so let's go ahead and turn it on doesn't that look the same as the higher voltage? I changed the scale. It's one volt per uh, division and 200 milliamps per division. And we came up to, let's see, it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's about 100 milliseconds, so it's the same time. The curves look the same as they did the high voltage, high current. So that looks very well behaved. Okay, guys, I got it set up for reading the ripple off of our max power output, which, well, the max I can get right now, okay? With my two 8 ohm loads. Here we go. All right, guys, there. Oh. Yeah, so 40 millivolts per division. I mean, that's not bad. That's uh, 55 volts out. For the percentage of ripple that is on 55 volts is not bad at all. And that is at 750 watts. All right guys, so the display is really nice, really easy to set up. Uh, you have your input voltage that comes into this. I guess that's what that's showing us. And then your voltage set, your current set, and your over voltage protection, your over current protection. So let's say that you want to set your voltage to five volts. So you just say voltage, and you can come over here and turn it up that way, or you can say five, enter. Or you can say five, whoops, or you can say voltage 5.1 volts, or 1.5, let's say, enter. So you can enter your volts that way, current's the same way. You can say, oh, I want to limit my current to one amp. Okay, now my over voltage protection, maybe I want to limit to 5.5 volts. So you hit shift, over voltage protection, 5.5, enter. And say my over current. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at, no, I want four amps. Okay, no, four and a half amps, let's say. Shift, over current protection, 4.5, enter. Okay, and it's really nice that you can turn on and off the voltage this way from the front panel, that's really cool. So you can set your over current protections and over voltage and all this kind of stuff for the front panel. You notice that battery symbol? That, and by the way, that's constant voltage, so you can set it up for constant current. You can set it up for different things. 
but that battery symbol is unique. You plug into these two terminals instead of the red one, and then you have your battery. So what I want to do, do is just show you real quick. If I touch a battery, let's say if I, you can measure a battery if you want, just measure it like that, and watch down to below 7.09 volts. Okay, so let's say I want to charge it to nine volts. So I can say, okay, I want voltage set to um, nine volts, or I'm going to say 8.7. And then I'm going to say my other voltage, I want to protect it so it doesn't go over nine volts. So shift nine, enter. Okay, and my current set for one amp and the set 4.5, but let's see what happens. So if I touch this here, now let's watch it again. Seven volts, 7.09. And then it goes to amp hours and watt hours, and it's not showing me anything. So for those, okay, now I turn it on. Now look at that, it's charging at one amp. And it's charging to, it's charging up. 7.5 watts and look at the watt hours now what will happen is it charges up when the current the charge current drops below I think it's 0.1 amp or maybe it's it's 0.1 amp or 0.01 amps but when it drops below a certain value then it just shuts off and stops charging so this is a nice feature and the manual it says uh, don't use this all the time don't rely on this rely on your chargers that come with your batteries but this is a nice alternative way to charge batteries if you need to I mean everybody knows you can hook up your power supply set the voltage and current and charge but I think the advantage of this is it has some smarts built in but read carefully on that remember batteries have lots of energy and you got to always be careful around batteries so just make sure you're doing the right thing with your battery, okay? So I just wanted to show you that because that's just a, a very interesting uh, you know, thing you have with this. Now watch, as I turn this off, my power supply back here is just very noisy, the one I bought for this. So this turns off the display, but it doesn't turn off the power supply. To turn off the power supply, you have to reach back here now before I do that, I'm going to turn on my display. You have to reach back here, turn off the power. Power supply, oh, quiet. But look, isn't that cool? So it's just running on all that stored energy on those capacitors, and then it shuts down. <laughs> now, I'm wondering if I had the little battery in there. Uh, it probably just stores memory. It probably doesn't need a display on. Oh, there's a little protective cover I can still peel off this thing, too. But anyway, oh, there it is, right there. Ah, let's take that off. There we go. Hey, by the way, uh, this app seems to be laid out pretty nicely. Uh, I was having a hard time getting the Wi-Fi connected. I couldn't get it connected, so um, I don't know. It, it was asking me to check my uh, IP address and things like that. It just seems like it should just hook up. So, yeah, that's kind of... A, thumbs down as far as the connectivity but it does look like they put some nice work into it so hopefully they'll fix that just to show you the menu you hit shift menu button and I turn off my Wi-Fi which I think I'm gonna turn it off since it doesn't seem to which I and you hit enter key to go up inside here and I think I'm gonna go turn that off since it tries to connect every time I turn on the power supply now. Maybe I can still hook up to this, but then I got to load that software on my PC. All right, I was getting almost 750 watts out of this, about 746, and I was pulling in volt amps from my power cord, 1.26 kilowatts. So, you know, 12, almost 1300 watts to get 700. So the power factor is about, power factor is 0.7 almost, 0.689, okay? So I'm pulling 910 watts in reactive power. That's just going to capacitors, inductors, that kind of thing. It's not providing real power. Uh, I had 10.6 amps, and 
in watts, I was pulling 870. So I think that uh, that efficiency probably comes out around 85%. I think I was seeing around 85% at some other power levels. So it's so between efficiency and power factor, I'm pulling a lot of power from my plug strip to get 750 watts. So if I want to get higher than that, then I want higher efficiency, which I'm probably not going to get too much higher efficiency because between the AC DC power supply and then coming through the buck regulator through the right end, um, you're just losing some efficiency, right? And so 85% between two converters and series probably isn't too bad. But the power factor point, you know, if I get active power factor correction where it's going to be 0.99, then that's going to save me a lot of VA volt amps. And if I'm pulling, you know, say 750 from this, then from the wall with efficiency, if it's 870, it'll be closer to 870 watts that I'm pulling. Okay? So. Yeah, versus almost 1,300 volt amps. All right, guys. Hey, uh, thumbs up to the video if you like it. Um, even if you don't like the power supply, if you like the video, thumbs up. That helps the video a lot, the YouTube analytics. And appreciate the Patreons. Always two thumbs up to the Patreons. And thanks for all you guys watching. And I'd like to hear your comments about other tests you'd like to see. One thing I've... I've I took some other measurements on, on Ripple... And I want to show you those. I want to show you how we can clean that up. And but this video is getting really long, and that was going to add another. That was going to add some more time. So I'll do that in a follow-up video on this to show you how to clean up the noise uh, on one of these things. Okay. All right. So hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.